Now what about cutting? So let's take this back to the beginning, frame one, put this back to the end frame, close enough, these don't look exact. Oh, that's way off, but okay, whatever. So say, I'm gonna just show you cuts first. So you have to select the files you wanna cut, and then there's a couple different ways to cut. There's a soft cut and a hard cut. And K is the hotkey. So if you just wanna do a cut, you can just press K. Now you can also right click and go to split and boom, it'll split the files so you can move them around separately. And you can see that it'll overlap a little bit like that. If it's doing that, it'll snap, and as you can see. Now that was a soft cut. Just doing that split is a soft cut. And what that means when it's a soft cut is you're given some freedom for repairing your little timeline. You see these little light gray edges? You can click those. I'm actually gonna do a control click so I get both of them. Uh, the sound and the video and you can just move that if you have it highlighted you can move it so a soft cut allows you to extend past the place where you cut so now we actually get duplicate video like from here to here is going to repeat twice because we extended it i'm going to hit Control z to undo that change all right so soft cut allows you to extend past where you cut that's the big thing about the soft cut it's very forgiving for lining things up. So now let's drag this back over. All right, well that's fine, we're just gonna leave that. Now let's talk about hard cut. So let's go somewhere else and select both of these. If you just do split, it doesn't do anything unless you have them selected, so it only splits the ones you select. So you press K. Now the other option is Shift K. You don't see that here because it's not as common, but if you're doing something like changing the speeds and uh, doing uh, speed up, fast forward, uh, slow down. You do need to do these hard cuts, but if you're not doing those, you don't need to worry about it. So to hard cut, it's shift K uh, and looks like that's now called hold split. So they've changed those names in the old versions. They were uh, soft cut and hard cut. Now it's split and hold split. So the hold split, we'll do that. Let's move this over a little bit. We're gonna find that even if you click these ends with control click, it's not going to let us extend. See, it has this like uh, dark gray area. It's just going to be like a paused area that is just a freeze frame of the first frame of whatever. So it doesn't let you repair your video in that way, but it does allow for some freeze frame action. And that's kind of cool sometimes. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And I think you probably get how to do the cuts and move things around and extend the beginnings ends and like line them up. That's like, you know, 99% of the work sometimes when you're just doing some basic stuff. Like maybe you have this awful section where you said something you don't want out there. So you're just like, all right, I'm gonna shift K there. I'm gonna shift K there. And I'm just gonna get rid of this section. So you do that by just highlighting that section and pressing delete. Now I did a hard cut here and I did a hard cut here, so I'm not gonna be able to re-extend back into it. It's just gonna do freeze frames if I do that. Control Z to undo. So let's say this section right here, we want to maybe speed this up. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to do a speed up. Now this only works if you have hard cuts on either edge. So this edge needs to be a hard cut. This edge needs to be a hard cut. Otherwise, this, this speed thing is going to be wonky. So, uh, getting the volume or the sound right with your speed ups is a little weird too, uh, but you can do it. All right, so you click on this main video here, and let's go ahead and mess with the time a bit. So, you can go over here to the right. This is the properties of your currently selected clip. Okay, so when you click on this, you get those properties of your currently selected clip. And let's just look through these a little bit. There's transform, which allows you to reposition everything and scale and uh, rotate origin. You can do those with soft or hard cuts, that's fine, but you can play around with these a little bit and you can actually see what happens there visually. So these are more things you can play around with a bit uh, for your video editing creativity. I'm just gonna hit undo on all, all of these. There we go. All right, and then we have crop which is gonna let you cut off some of one of the sides or something like that. This can be handy for uh, doing like split screen stuff. Maybe you want one on this side and you bring in another video and you put it on the other side. You can do something like that with crop. All right, we're just gonna set this back to zero. 
but uh, I mainly want to get to this time, but we'll get to it. There's video, strobe, I never mess with this. I'm not sure what it does, 100% color. You can just change, well, the saturation is going to be kind of a black and white effect or super color and multiply. It's going to make it really bright or just disappear entirely. So you can leave those default, but you can mess around with those at some point. Okay, so it's not over here. Uh, but there are some important things. It's nice, It's really good to know about those. Mostly transform, crop, uh, and this color are probably what you're going to use. You probably don't want to mess with the time and source and other stuff. All right. And there's a compositing. We'll probably come back to this some. This is actually somewhat important. Right now it's set to cross. The most intuitive way to use this blend, in my opinion, is actually with overdrop. Uh, because that makes, basically, if you're doing some layers of videos, overdrop will make the one on top visible first, basically. So often when I'm layering stuff, I'll be switching the top, the ones higher up to overdrop. Otherwise, they're not going to reveal stuff behind you. So that's going to be a little weird. Let me do another example. Let me just show you. Uh, I will get to the timing stuff. I just uh, don't want to skip over this. So I'm going to shift K here. I'm just going to grab another section of video. I'm going to shift K here. And let's say I don't want the audio on this one. So keep the audio there. Click it and hit delete. And now this piece of video. Say I want to bring this up into its own timeline. And then maybe I want to shrink it and do a little picture in picture. So let's click over here so we can see what's going on. Right now, what's going on is going to play the audio of the one behind it, but when it gets to here, it's you're going to get overlay of this video. So this video is going to be on top. So we can click this. Let's go to transform, and let's just scale it down a little bit. 0.7 is good. So now the one on top is smaller. But as you can see, there's uh, this checkerboard behind it, which basically means it's going to be nothing or black. So you, you would think you would see this video behind it, right? And the reason you don't is because this is set to crop. You need to set it to overdrop and then it'll show the ones behind it. So that's the point of that. You can see you'll do this with pictures if you're bringing in like PNGs and stuff. Uh, you can play around with these some, but typically you're going to be using stuff like overdrop. And that should be it. The opacity, you can make it fade in and out or be half visible can be used for effects. If you're, for example, layering two of the same scene and you want to make someone disappear like they're a ghost, you could use something like this opacity to fade them out. Um, and that gets into keyframing. Uh, we'll come back to keyframing. It's kind of complicated. I want to finish talking about um, speeding up a video. So let's say we just want to speed up this little section here that we overdropped. You can do this to anything really. Uh, we're also just going to move the position a little bit up here. Now, this is just totally sample, kind of, you know, whatever. So say we want to speed this up. We do need hard cuts on the side, so let's just double check. Yep, we got a hard cut there. We got a hard cut there. So now there, someone's probably going to ask me about these keys. I just click the edge, get it highlighted, press the G key for grab. It's a blender hotkey, G, and it'll give you these little arrows that let you start moving it. And when you click left click again, it snaps it into place. If you press escape, it cancels. So that's all I was doing there is hitting G and then escape. All right, so let's speed this up. To speed these up, you need to add an effect strip. So we're going to get into a little bit about effect strips. All right, so you click on it. You go up here to add. And then we want effect strip. And we'll see a couple specific ones. Transform, speed control. Transform is essentially the same as this, except you get another set of transform properties so you can like layer them. Uh, usually not necessary, but we're looking at speed control, speed control. So you're welcome to play around with all those because I'm not gonna talk about all of them. There's just too many, but speed control is gonna put the property on whatever you had selected. So it's gonna put that speed control property on that clip we had selected there. And uh, as you can see, it's there. It's kind of hard to visually make out. And it is defaulted to overdrop. If this doesn't default to overdrop, you might have to change it. Otherwise, it's uh, going to do something else. So now what we want to do is just, is just change this speed. Now, the way this works, but now if you grab an edge and extend it out, it's going to slow down the clip. 
it's going to basically match that small section and extend it out to that via slow mo. So it's hard to see here, but if I just hit spacebar, you'll probably see it a little better. You can see this is a slow mo going thing. So, yeah, maybe you don't want that right there, but uh, that's how you do slow mo basically is you just put that speed control over something that's hard cut on both sides and you extend it out. If you want to, sh if you want to make it faster, you do the same thing, except you bring it in and it should zip through. As you can see, it's going super fast there. It's hard to tell in this particular video, but yeah, look at this. Zip, zip. There you go. Whoop. So it's going a little faster. It's going to shrink down via speed up uh, to whatever you want. So we could play the whole clip super cl quick by doing this. It'll just, there we go. So maybe we want that. I don't know. I'm just doing random effects here. There's really no method to the madness. Just kind of showing you stuff. So we could have a sped up clip over top in the corner by just layering some of these fit effects. And there we go. Yeah, we don't have the sound. The sound is gone, right? So that's a thing. And that's something that's kind of tricky to get right, and it's going to take some trial and error. Typically, if you're speeding up or slowing down a clip, just delete the audio. Um, because, well, let me let me grab another section. So, Shift K here, we got another hard cut area. Let's click this, go Add, uh, Effect Strip, Speed Control. And now we got the audio alongside it for now. So this audio, and it's gonna be tricky, but basically what you gotta do is you gotta use this pitch. And I think it's changed from the way I remember it. But basically say, okay, this is, how many frames is this, All right? Let's, let's, we gotta do a little math sometimes because not everything's automatic with Blender. Sometimes you gotta kind of custom do it. You can see, that the duration is 10177. 10177. So it's that many frames. 10177. Alright, so maybe we want to make this double speed. So we'll cut the frames in half on this thing, which would be about. I don't know, let's pull up a calculator. So actually, we can do this the fast way. Just hit undo a few times. If you go to this duration, and you just go to the end of it and press and hit divide by two. Boom, it'll just do it for you. It'll set it to exactly half the best it can. Now we can do the same with this audio duration, divide by two. And we have the audio matching, but the audio isn't sped up or slowed down now until we hit this pitch. So I believe you just gotta, if you half the duration, you're gonna half the pitch and we should now get a match. Put it on my headphones so I can test. All right, so we should get, oh, I might've done this backwards. That would be a slow down pitch. So since we're speeding up the audio, we wanna up the pitch. This is gonna sound a little weird. It's gonna be chipmunky basically. And it looks like it's lagging me out a little bit. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's if you've got layered effects in this, timeline thing and it's going to be pretty slow that's normal as it catches up with all your effects and there we go the audio matches it's sped up and pitched up that's essentially how you do it so if you get stuck study that carefully but also no one's going to care a lot of times what people do is just delete the audio put a little music behind it or something and it's fine but if you must have your audio with it that's how you do it and it's the same for speed, speed up or slow down. If you extend it to double what it was, yeah, so speeding or putting this pitch up is for speed up, put it down to slow down. Now, there's something weird about the pitch. Uh, there might be more ways to adjust it to not be so chip monkey, but I'm not sure and I'm not going to get into it. That's basically how you do that stuff. Thank you.